Yesterday I was a witness to some buffoonery uh, in relation to the Academy Awards. And no, I'm not talking about the wrong movie being called out, as some people would probably speculate I would be referring to. Yesterday's Academy Awards was held on February 26. Coincidentally, the fifth anniversary of Trayvon Martin's passing. Now, during this festivity, if you can call it that, this ceremony, there were several black actresses whom donned uh, these hoodies that had Trayvon's name on it. That includes Kerry Washington, Tracy Ellis Ross, Gabrielle Union. Now, I'm just going to throw out some numbers here. Kerry Washington has an estimated net worth of $8 million. Tracy Ellis Ross has an estimated net worth of $10 million. Gabrielle Union has an estimated net worth of $12 million. What? Why is this relevant? Well, you'll see. Now, you go in any lower-income black community, and you can easily surmise that between all the people living in those um, squandered conditions, a good chunk of them probably don't even have 100000 And to give you an idea of just how much a million is to... Because some people don't know or just, you know, don't think of these numbers in this kind of sense. Basically, if Kerry Washington, for example, was to say, you know what, I'm going to give 1% of my income to this person of what I overall have. That person would have $80,000. And that is more than enough to pay for rent in one of these lower income communities for a while while you go and try to find a job to work at and eventually move out of the ghetto. Again, that's something that can be done feasibly. See, a lesson people have to realize, it's not really about what you say, but rather that you put your money where your mouth is. Because money is something that really speaks and translates to effect. The only reason Trump or Clinton or Sanders or anybody else that ran for president last year were able to run and in Trump's case win was because they had millions and millions and millions of dollars. So, all, you know, they didn't go around and just speak at random events and coincidentally get votes. Everything that's successful in this world is backed up by money. The most best-selling novels are considered successful because they're backed up by money, by how many people chose to buy them. So, you know, that's that. But these actresses wear these these Trayvon hoodies. You know, they call themselves remembering him and remembering his passing. And I almost had this sort of just realization. It dawned on me. These actors, and really just any type of activist that you see in relation to um, African Americans, so the ones that defend African Americans that get shot by officers, and I'm 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 going to say this and then back it up with my rationale. They care more about blacks that have been killed or that are dead or deceased than they do about the ones that are living. An example: Let's pretend I am an impoverished black male, and you know, I decide, you know what? I don't like those white cops. Just go up and smack a cop right in his face. And he proceeds to put some lead in my chest and I pass away after that. And let's say my mother uh, and father, you know, come out and they say, our son was brutally murdered by this officer. They will get speaking events. They will get attention from the media. They will get the support of these black actors as when Beyonce took... Um, several of the mothers of the movement to one of her performances a while back. They will gain so much revenue. You know, it's proven. You had Sandra Bland's mother become a millionaire after her daughter's passing. Now, that's from all of these speaking events and the attention she garnered after her child died, regardless of what your opinion was on the circumstances. After she passed, her mother was arguably benefited more so than she ever would have been if her daughter had stayed alive. And that is a horrible thing for me to have to repeat 
and actually believe in. I don't like saying that stuff. It bothers me. You know, and but it's frustrating when you look at the amount of cash that these African American celebrities who claim to be so in touch with their 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 black brethren but won't put out a dime toward creating a school that allows them to I don't know, learn the curriculum needed for them to go to these top universities and actually get some realistic jobs like engineer or lawyer or anything that just is palpable that they can achieve if they're willing to put the work into. You know, this this little nonsense about, oh, I'm, when I grow up, I want to be a rapper or I want to be a singer or a basketball player. That needs to stop this year or very soon because you can't have that and also have the culture where we snipe each other in Chicago, in Baltimore, in any city with a major black population, and then be so convinced that these black celebrities who you you know churn out money to buy their albums, their CDs, watch their music, uh, watch their videos, and their movies and their uh, television series, they're getting benefited like these three today, Ross, Washington, and Union, or rather yesterday, while you continue to stay in the ghetto, in the hood, and it's not about a sense of entitlement. I'm not calling for one of these women or a single black celebrity. If yesterday, if tomorrow they announced that Jay-Z saw my video and wants to donate a hundred million to, ch to uh, African-American families all across the U.S., I'd be happy that he's doing that, but I'd be disappointed that he's the only one willing to do that. You cannot make this be about one person. You can't make one person solve the problems of an entire community. If they were to do that, they might as well take this and put it in the sky and just have that to where they say, yeah, every time something happens, Justin, go go do it. Go uh, go solve the problem. That's not possible. That's not realistic, and it's not comprehensive. A really so sound solution would be for these black celebrities who we know all have at least a million to all give 100000 to some organization that is get built toward giving African Americans with no criminal record, or if they do have a criminal record, it's something minor, such as marijuana possession, um, narcotics, whatever. These things would see a surplus in the income and the overall living conditions of blacks. I guarantee it. I can say that with conviction because it's been done before. And the best thing is, since it's run by blacks, you won't hear anything about discrimination or the problems that are somehow being caused by the non-existent white entity because it's going to be run by blacks, blacks helping blacks. You know, unity within the community. You can't rely on the governor or the mayor who oftentimes is Caucasian to be the one that saves you and pulls you out of these economic downturns. A lot of times they're just looking to run for the next office and they want to make it sound as if they care. You know, I'm not running for anything. I say this stuff because it frustrates and bothers me that you have all of these African Americans in Hollywood that have enough money to where they could never work again. They could just sit at home every day and cancel all of their investments and just live there forever. And the next two or three generations of their family would probably do the exact same, live in lives of luxury, while you have these other blacks who don't even have a, a pot to piss in, to put it bluntly. And then if you critique them in any manner, you'll be told, you know, you sound, you're trying to sound entitled. You're trying to force them to do something that they shouldn't have to do. Well, you know, it's the person who says that is correct. One black celebrity should not have to make up for the negligence of the others to go and try to make a move. And look, this is not directed at any celebrity that's black who happens to be African American. This is directed at the ones that try to have these public statements uh, where they'll go out and condemn, you know, whatever shooting or try to show that they're on the side of Black Lives Matter, but won't take a single penny out of that million dollar paycheck they get every year to go and help your community. And you live in poverty while they continue to sell their CDs and live their lives of luxury. And this is the balanced system where, you know, we're awarded off of our talent and our achievement. But we can't give somebody else a helping hand. You know, it's funny, these celebrities preach about equal opportunity and the lack of it by their Caucasian brethren when 
they're not even doing it themselves. I want somebody to go and pull up a single story of one of these celebrities opening up a business and saying, this is designed so that African Americans from lower income communities or just poor blacks, unlike me, can have a job and start up and have some reliable revenue and won't face discrimination in their workforce. Why don't you have Jay-Z or, you know, who I'm going to keep bringing up because he has with, what, 660 uh, million, the most net worth out of anybody I can think of off the top of my head. Why don't you have him or another rapper open up a restaurant or some business that is in Chicago, that's in Baltimore, that's in L.A.? These celebrities have enough money to save this community one way or the other. This out of uh, wedlock teenage pregnancy thing that we see and I, I talked about a couple of days ago, they could just as easily give some of their give up, all of them donate a hundred thousand to um you know a select woman that has had a child out of wedlock and you know is young and can't take care of it to ensure that child has a somewhat decent upbringing with that hundred thousand they could easily do that but they won't because they don't care this is a publicity stunt to fuel the opinion that yes we care about you. Look at our, our, our shirts. Look at our shirts. We care about you. Look at our shirts about the guy who's been dead for five years that us wearing this shirt won't do anything to bring him back. It, you know, while we ignore you in the tattered and ripped shirt living in your mother's uh, duplex has no clothes. Look at our shirt. We care about you. Look at our shirt. Th that's supposed to be what, what, what is supposed to convince me that you are on my side. Uh, black Hollywood that claims to sympathize with Black Lives Matter. You know, I've had my own issues with that group. But I know most members of that group are not rich. They don't, if they are, they don't have, you know, several millions of bucks to throw around. A lot of these celebrities, though, they do. And they choose not to. And until I see one of them go into Chicago in the Chicago with a security team, whatever, protect yourself from getting your chest blown and pull those single mothers and those other impoverished people that are black out of the hood. I don't want to hear anything about these. These people represent me. They're people I'm supposed to think of on Black History Month. No, pathetic. You know, if I were to give the uh, black Hollywood, again, who sympathizes with, with Black Lives Matter, um, if I were to give these people who have millions of dollars to throw around on everything but helping someone else, I'd give them an F. I would give them an F. I would say they, you know, they are good at whatever they do, acting, uh, directing, singing. But when it comes to actually causing constructive change, when it comes to actually improving the lives of the people that look like them, they fail on almost every level. You know, you might give us one or two good songs we like or movies.